Hey gang. All right. Uh, let's try and have a look at uh, Six Days of Glory from the perspective of the victory conditions and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, I'm having a few issues here, so maybe by posting this video, someone will be able to set me straight. Uh, seems like the victory conditions and the setup locations and the VP points and stuff don't necessarily all kind of tie together very well. So the overall context of this situation is, uh, you know, Napoleon is uh, rushing a very small army to fight two larger armies, and he wants to pull his usual stunt, which is <clears throat> defeat one in detail, then rush off and defeat the other in detail. All well and good. Uh, and Napoleon's coming up from this southern direction, which you can see over here. There he is over there with his little army. You've got the Russians here. Sarkin's forces are here. Brusha has uh, two different groups of forces coming in from two different directions. And uh, supply sources, which is one of the victory conditions, are located uh, one here for the uh, uh, coalition forces. And sorry about that. And then one over there. <coughs> They're both supposed to be red. One's pink and one's red, but whatever. And then there's a blue one uh, here and another blue one here because headed back that way, we're headed towards Paris. I guess that's why that's that one. Uh, no, no real, uh, there, there is uh, historical notes as to why the, the Russians are here, you know, where they came from and all that sort of good stuff. And that's fine. It just, it looks kind of awkward right now. So you go, okay, great, Kevin, what's the problem? Well, here's the problem. A little bit of a unique starting situation where there's an imaginary line here and an imaginary line here where wherein if the Napoleonic, uh, Napoleon's forces, the French, cross that line, it immediately activates one or the other of those forces, right? So <clears throat> these guys are set in place and have a die roll they need to make each uh, each turn and each uh, each command phase, so there's three command phases in a turn, but basically, uh, you know, uh, each side if they roll a six, first of all the Russians roll. If they roll a six, they're activated. Excuse me, they're activated, and we don't roll for the for the Prussians. We just activate the Russians. If these guys don't activate, then we roll for the Prussians. And we see if they activate, and then each turn as it goes along, you know, the uh, AM, PM, and night, there's a plus one, then a plus two modifier, and eventually they automatically all all activate. Okay. Which so it's kind of setting up situations so that uh, uh, Napoleon can, you know, choose to go and lunge in and attack one of these two groups, and uh, you know, knock them out of the game, so to speak. And the question is, which one does he go for first? Does he do the historical where he took out this very small force of Prussians first or at least forced them to retreat? Or does he try and take on the larger Russian force and knock them out of the game, uh, knowing that it'll <clears throat> potentially be a little bit trickier to, to get the, the Prussians into the game with the die roll, etc.? So... It comes to the VP stuff. So <clears throat> there's this concept of uh, casualty points, which when accumulated per core, uh, will give you a uh, demoralization value for that core, which really doesn't do anything to the core. And right? all it does is uh, adds one to the initiative role. So if you've got command points, you're going to be okay, you get, and you stay close together, you're probably going to be able to activate most of the forces you want to activate. And I think it stops you from doing night forced marches, and that's about it. Uh, supply rules, uh, you treat you, forces that are out of supply as if they're demoralized. So once again, it doesn't really do very much to them either. So it's one of the, one of the niggles I have with the Zucker system at this scale is that demoralization and supply really are relatively meaningless. Uh, if you can bear with bear with the uh, the uh, P 
penalty for initiative. There's no real penalties on attack or anything like that uh, that I can see anyway. You know, you would have thought there'd be a plus one on the die roll uh, to, or, or a minus one, as the case may be, a DRM to penalize the, the demoralized force. Now, that demoralization rate can go up and down because uh, you can reconstitute units that have been eliminated. They go, depending on how they die, they go into this reconstitution pool. So you have this overall demoralization number, which is 34 for both sides. Now, for the French, they have a total of 34 points if you add up all the cores. So all of their forces have to be demoralized for them to lose. <coughs> The, the, the coalition have 40 uh, points. So basically, you know, 80% plus of their forces have to be demoralized for them to lose. Well, are there any other ways that you can win? Well, yes, there are. You can add up VPs. Okay, well, how do you get VPs? Well, you get VPs for exiting units uh, per combat unit and baggage and bridge units off their own supply source. And here's where the, one of the two problems starts to evolve. And I'm gonna show you the rule in a second on the screen, excuse me. So these guys, once they activated, and assuming that the French couldn't get between them, and assuming the French wanted to even get between them, they get half a VP for each unit, and then it ends up that you can get 15 victory points if you get off everything off the map. So they can come you know, down this road up here and toddle off, almost get off in one turn uh, if you use a uh, road march and all that sort of fun stuff. Uh, so they have to activate early, clearly, otherwise the French can't intervene, but they could get 15 victory points. And the French could also get almost 15 victory points, I, I think, as I'll have to double check that now. So I thought, well, well, how many victory points do you get for this whole demoralization? Well, nowhere in the rules that I can see does it talk about any other victory points that are accumulated. It doesn't say you get one victory point per demoralized unit or demoralization, demoralization point or casualty point or whatever the case may be. So let's go have a look at the map uh, on screen and the rules on screen and just see where I might be screwing this up because maybe I am, maybe it's just really straightforward. Okay, so here's an image of the exit areas and the force locations for everybody, okay? And uh, that may be a little bit hard to read, but these are the demoralization levels it talks about the VPs you get for exiting the map and then the victory conditions and it talks about basically anything else other than a decisive or critical victory is a victory for the coalition um so <clears throat> you know I, I don't know what benefit the french are going to get from moving forces off the board that seems kind of funky they could just retreat off the board and get their 15 victory points and then of course the enemy would win, or the enemy can also, the coalition can also just retreat off the board uh, as best they can and see what happens. But that would be then a VP counting exercise. No one would be demoralized. So then I went over here and I looked at the updated rules and there's some you know, bits and pieces here, uh, but it's the same wording. I just, I am, um, <laughs> I'm just confused. I don't know. There's two ways to do it, and there's no way to compare the two, and it doesn't make sense. I don't understand. Help me. Here's the demoralization levels, 34 uh, each. So, I'm going to go back to the map now. Grab my coffee with me. So good war gamers and Napoleonic experts and historians help me out here and let me know where to drive my general. 
where does Napoleon need to go and what does he need to do? Because I, I, I'm ready to start, but I don't know what I need to be doing to it and what goals I need to achieve. I have not been able to reconcile this in my little mind here. Uh, so I'm looking for advice. So hit me up with a comment, help a brother out here, point me to uh, some set of rules or updates or errata that's not on content world would be preferable because uh, I just don't want to deal with the forums over there. Uh, but I'm happy to uh, dig into that if I need to. Look forward to catching up with all of you soon and Happy New Year.